Welcome to Sports News Reviews Monday Sports and NFL News. I'm going to start off with something uh, something a little different. The hammer throw. I, so I like to start off with the uh, international sports and sports that Canada's involved in. Someone wins uh, 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 at least on the po well, someone wins is on the podium. Uh, so it's Canada's Ethan Katzberg wins hammer throw gold medal at World Olympics Championships. So Ethan Katzberg wins hammer th throw gold. Nice. Let's here's a there's a here here's a they show in the picture of the nice fine chap. Nice. Okay, let's see. Hammer thrower Ethan Katzberg of Nymo BC has followed followed his first Canadian title with a world title. Oh, okay. He was a Canadian title winner, uh, of course, to get there. Um, let's see. Katzenberg. Oh, yeah, here it is. Katzenberg won a gold medal in his World Athletics Championships de debut with a throw of 81.25 meters on Sunday, raising its Canadian record to best 2021 Olympic champion Wojcik Wojcik Noski Noiki N O W I C K I of Poland, who did 81.2 in Budapest, 81.25, 81.02. Wow, 81.25, 81.02. Wow, not uh, they didn't beat him by much, but in Budapest, crazy. Katzenberg's effort on his fifth and sixth attempts vault him to first place to stay ahead of Norwiki or Nowiki and Bruce Hailes, H A L A S Z, Hailes of Hungary, 80.82. Ooh, look at that, 81.0. Okay, he's got 80. Point 80.82 meters. That's the Hungarian, and uh, from and Nowicki of Poland, 81.02 meters in the Canadian. Katzberg, 81.25 meters. Nice. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. I would love to. I I I got. You know what? I should go on CBC on Saturdays and look more. I I didn't even think of it. I didn't even. Wow! I would love to watch that. I'm pretty sure it'd be on CBC. I would love to watch that. Okay, so we got. Uh, let's see. There's, there's a lot of soccer right now here. It's. But it's no if it's not for if soccer is not Canada I don't really and I don't even really care about the professional league right now the Inter Milan with what's his name like the league with Inter Milan and uh, Toronto uh, FC the uh, Vancouver Whitecaps the MSL Major League Soccer yeah I'm not. I, I, it's only I only uh, interested if Canada Canadian team is going far, and then I'm interested in the, uh, in the uh, reporting on the the uh, soccer. Okay. Oh, karate, karate, karate. So it says. This Kitchener Karate team is looking to create it in history was in uh, quotes at the Pan American Games. What Pan American Games? August 21, 2023. Uh, I guess there's Pan American Games coming up? I didn't even know that. A team of young athletes from Kitchener, Ontario Karate Dodo is, let's see, 
is for representing Team Canada on the world stage. Okay, so Giselle, oh, there's a hard names to say. Giselle DeRoche. This one's easy. <laughs> Logan Robinson. Eli, uh, e Eli, E I, E E L I Y A H, Israelov, I S R I A L O F, Israelov, and Marina Guevara are the four of the 106 athletes taking part in the Pan American Games Karate Tournament and Tournament. <laughs> tournament in, screw that one. Tournament in Chile. Okay, they're going to Chile. Uh, <laughs> well, gotta put some pepper on that chili, eh? <laughs> oh, that was bad cliche. Well, there's the four. I wonder if they. I wonder if they ever. And there's their coach. I wonder if their coach ever showed them the Karate Kid, the movie. We're professionals in here. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about seeing. I was saying that guy right there. Ever showed him the movie Karate? Ever showed them the movie Karate Kid? Or this? Uh, <laughs> hey, you know, get out of get out of karate uh, for a few hours. And two hour, oh, like an hour and a half. Okay, last night I lost everything here. I'm on YouTube all of a sudden. One second, everything is just going bonkers. And okay, so let's on to this story here. Canada ousted from Little League World Series following loss to Mexico. Oh, all right. Didn't even know there was a World Series, but okay, Little League World Series, and let's see. Oh. Oh, they're heartbroken kids. Let's see what happened here. Okay. Canada's run at the Little League World Series ended with a 10-1 loss to Mexico in an elimination round game on Sunday in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. The Canadians, represented by North Regina Little League, opened the scoring in the first inning Okay, when Jackson Weir stole home. Mexico leveled the score 1-1 in the third inning and then surged ahead on the eighth with an eight-run fourth inning to seal the victory. Oh, that was ooh, that was hard. So the, the team was from Tijuana, adding to the onslaught with one more run in the fifth. Wow. Oh, wow. One inning. One inning did it in. The fourth inning. Okay. I guess it must be the finals this week and next weekend. Okay, I'm looking for. So, okay, okay, I didn't even know. It's just it's only uh, basketball, but it says okay, but it looks like there's a championship involved. Canada tops U.S. Under 2014 for third straight 3x3 basketball women's series title in Quebec. Okay, if anybody ever didn't know there was a 3x3 uh, women's 3x3 basketball tournament in Quebec, um, count me in in that category. I didn't know that. And the Canada wins, that's the part. I got my attention. Canada tops U.S. on the 24 for third straight 3x3 three three basketball women's series title in Quebec. Okay. Canada won its third, where is it, say, third straight title of the 2023 3x3 three three basketball women's series on Saturday with a 21-19 victory over the American under-24 squad. In the in the final in Quebec City, with the Americans pressing t to the game to tie the game late, Michelle Oops, Plouffe P L O U F F E delivered 
the dagger with a two point shot to reach the target score of 21. Oh, yeah, okay, you only played a 21. Wow, I forgot all about that. I was wondering, the whole time I was reading that, I was thinking of how much time is in a game. And it's first one to 21, and I think there's no ties. You can't tie, no, first one to 20, 20, 20. Yeah, you can't, so. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, first one to 21, uh, three by three. Wow, that is got to be, and they use half court too, probably. Let's see. Uh, well, there's nice. They show a nice, they show a nice picture. Okay, there's two. <laughs> there's two of the three. Two out of three is better than being bad, I guess. So two out of three, I got. can't really see it couldn't really see it let's see okay so oh they showed a picture oh no that was advertising i was gonna see i was gonna look at it okay so so the canada tops u.s under 2014 for the third straight three by three basketball tournament world series in quebec city okay so that's i was gonna look at, i think they use a half court i'll do I, let's see if i can do the quickie quickie one here see what it looks like Okay, go to just go on the Google here, and the let's use the microphone. Okay. Three by three basketball. Let's see. I'll go to images. Mm. Oh wow! There, oh Google's but Google is behind. It gave me mostly cards. I don't understand. Uh, three by three, three fifty-three basketball. Three by three. It didn't understand what I said. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, try that. Three on three. I'll say three on three. Three on three basketball. Yeah. Okay, that's what I want. That's more like it. Okay, so do they use the full court? I just wanted to see if they use the full court or not. It says, how do you play three on three basketball? This quickly. A player at the top of the key starts to play with a pass to the wing player. The, after passing the basketball, cuts towards the basket, attempting to execute execute a give and go play if there aren't any opportunities for a pass and turns out to be screen okay three on three pass I just wanted the, the rules I think, uh, it's getting too far this is going too far I don't know if I should quit while I'm ahead oh jeez this, this is just brutal I just want to know that they use the full. They don't use the full court. They just use half a court. Right. Oh, this is no. This is not good. Okay. This is not good. Okay. Come on, hurry up. Oh, this is Baroda. I'm waiting for. Her. Oh, did I ever get the wrong one? Okay, I went on the wrong site. Oh my gosh. This this isn't just worth it. Three by three Canada class. No. I just give up. I gotta give this up. Okay, well a three by three basketball uh, reporting killed me there. Okay. A lot okay. That was a waste of time. Okay. After after reporting on it, looking for a video to uh, see what the if they play on half court. And now I don't really care anymore. Now, I'm I'm just gonna go on this story so I can calm down. Uh, 
and uh, not scream at myself because I'm just you know I'm just uh, I'm frustrated right now because I, I I wasted I could have just pushed pause and looked for things but uh, you know I kept it rolling that's the part. okay uh, nice picture of uh, the sailboat and it's uh, oh I guess it's on Toronto okay so. Okay, so Toronto sailor Sarah Douglas qualifies a spot for Canada at the 2024 Paris Olympics. Oh, wow. Okay, this is a bigger deal. Okay, so Sarah Douglas qualified a spot for Canada at the 2024 Olympic Games, finishing in 24th position overall the women's the ding, dinghy competition on Saturday at the 2023 Sailing World Championships in the Hague, Netherlands. Okay, they must have went on. They must have went on the ocean part. Okay, if it's the Netherlands, they must have went in the ocean. But oh, like this. This is this has got to be the most relaxing sport. If if uh, uh, when you're well, if you're not competing, I mean, this is the, this this. Is relaxing right here. This is this is what I meant by I had to go on the story. Oh, oh I, 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 I fix this all the time. Okay, so it's just it's just a uh, being on a, a boat right there, and I don't mind being by myself. I I, I could be by myself, but it's best to have another person. But anyways, um, like. This is relaxing. Alrighty, so she secured a spot for the twenty twenty four Paris Olympics. Okay, uh, we're all Canada to what to watch for Canadian worth athletes. I'm just looking at any other Canadian sport, but we're okay. So I'm just gonna be done with that. I'm actually. We're gonna look at the, uh, see what's going down with the Toronto Blue Jays here. Oh jeez, I mean, it's professionalism here. Toronto Blue Jays. Okay, let's see where they're at. Okay, top story. Okay, the Blue Jays notebook last. Chance versus Orioles before it's wild card or bust. I, I don't know. Let's see. Are they in? Are the official side of the chart? I want to just see if what's their standings. Let's see. Toronto Blue Jays new score standings perfect. That's what I needed. Okay. Can I see? Come on. There we go. That's what I was looking for, right? So I was looking. For, okay. A L. East standings, Baltimore, Tampa Bay, Toronto. Okay, okay. But what's it? full standings? Is they have the one with the? If uh, let's see, you, uh, I just want to know if they're in the play. Will they be in the play? Uh, wild card. Let's see, I'll just ask it. Just gonna ask it, that's all. Are the Toronto Blue uh, Toronto Blue Jays in the playoffs? Let's see. Oh, it's okay. MLB playoff push. Mariners 
overtake Blue Jays for final wild card spots. Oh. Okay, but they're still in it, though. The Jays are still in it. I mean, three days ago, after dropping 500 on Wednesday, Yankees star. How old is this? Wait. It's, uh, it's got to be fairly... Three days ago, three days ago. Well... This was three days ago. Well, I, I want something current. I'm going to ask for playoffs... Playoff, uh, yeah, playoff uh, st standings for MLB. Current MLB playoff standings. I hope it gives it to me. No, give me the. Oh, here we go. Wild card standings. I hope Major League Baseball. Give help me out, Major League Baseball. It's your, it's your league. Yeah, that's, that's all I want to know is wild card. Let's go. Come on, load up. Now it's on my end. Okay. This is on my end, and it's taking forever for it to load up. There we go. Okay. What do we have? AL leaders. Okay. And wild card. Oh, okay. Yeah, there it is. Toronto, half a game behind Seattle for their wild card race. The final spot. Look at that. But Boston's three. Below Toronto is Boston is uh, three. Oh my gosh. Yankees are nine. I didn't. Wow. Yeah, they're they're not. Okay, so. The, well, the AL leaders are. In the east, it's Baltimore. The west is Texas. In the central, it's Minnesota. And then the, the wild card Tampa Bay, Houston. And then Seattle and Toronto just knocking on the door. Wow, they're gonna keep they're gonna keep it interesting. Like right now, this is gonna be. I'm almost tempted to watch uh, Blue Jays games, if, but I don't, uh, just I'm more of a football guy. I like to well, I rather watch football games. Is there any Monday Night Football tonight? Yeah, that's just, I'm going to go to just NFL news now. Let's see. Let's see if there's any football games tonight. Are there any Monday night football games? Oh, missed it. Okay. Any Monday night football games? Let's see. Is there a football game Monday night? Nope. Sadly, there's no football Monday night football game. There's no Monday night football game. I can't, it's hard to understand why not, like that one. It's like, how could you couldn't just put one of those teams that were, like, playing on Sunday or something? I put them on Monday night. They'll, people will watch. There's idiots that will watch like me. <laughs> I'll watch a Monday night football game. Uh, let's see. Maybe CFL? Maybe CFL has one. Nah. CF, oh, jeez. I'll try again. CFL schedule. Okay. Let's get the CFL schedule here. Man, this game is Thursday. Okay, Thursday, August the 24th. Oh, what's in Blue Bombers? And Friday is the uh, Stampeders Argonauts. Saturday, um, Tiger Cats and Lions. I'm th just thinking of the... I'm not going to do a live stream. It's just not worth it. It just kills me. It's, it's just The live streams kill me after all. It's too, it's too long. and Even lying down, it still kills me. Okay. Okay, so the Lions and then the Red Blacks and Elks are on Sunday. All right. I, I might even not even be home. I might actually be out and about. Once every two weeks, I go out and about, and now I'm thinking like, I might not even subject someone else to watch a Tiger Cats game when they're just so bad and miserable right now. Oh, they were doing good, and uh, and uh, 
if the Ticats were having a winning record, I'd actually watch it get some of the uh, uh, where are going uh, the place I'm going. I'd get up to hey, let's watch the Ticats game, but I, I'm not going to subject it to them. I got I'll just bring the tabby with me and I'll just get the score. That's good enough. And then just uh, if it's close game or you know, then I can hey put it on the game. You know, like that's the kind of way. That's the kind of uh, deal it's going to be. So yeah, I don't have to live stream it. Okay. Ooh, let's go with some NFL news now. Bills, 17 million starter predicted to lose what? Oh, come on. Start lose lose roster to rookie. Ooh, okay. There weren't many positive things to say about the Buffalo Bills preseason performance against the Pittsburgh Steelers on Saturday, August 19th, especially when it came to the offensive line. However, there was one lone bright spot rookie, Os Osiris Torrance. When Buffalo selected Torrance with their number 59 overall pick in the 2025 NFL, draft. Rumors that the Bills starting right guard, Ryan Bates, was in a hot seat B begin to speak. Bates' contract isn't big enough that the, uh, big enough for the Bills feels that he has to start should Osiris Torrance come in and win the job this year. Okay. Ooh, scary. Oh, okay. So, this is... Okay, so they show image of uh, the players, number 71. Okay. Hmm. I... F it's... Uh, I wouldn't mind $17 million in... I know, I know, I know. It's like, oh no, they're not like that. I, but I, I know, I know. But I'm just, you know, saying, seventeen million dollars, and I don't even play. But I, I, I'm pretty sure he's. Yeah, they said that he's got the contract where his performance, based on uh, something like. Who knows what is? Yeah, but it's, it didn't. Like they can't if they if they, they release them they have to give them the the money probably seventeen million and uh, it's a tough one oh no see this is horrible this is horrible news Vikings preseason start possibly suffered significant injury versus Titans Minnesota Vikings cornerback C O R N E R cornerback. Najee Thompson left Saturday's game with a possible concussion. Oh, no. Oh, no. Concussion. After making another masterful play on special teams, Minnesota Vikings rookie cornerback Najee Thompson was forced to leave the team's preseason game against the Tennessee Titans on Saturday with what was described as concussion-like symptoms according to multiple reports. Oh, I hope, oh, wow. Oh, I hope he's, I hope he's doing much better now. Maybe, oh, that's, that's not what you, you never want to see that. Okay. Let's see if there's any other NFL juicy news or Okay. Okay, Jaguars confirm Rourke as QB three. Okay, but but there's something to it. But will he stay in Jacksonville? Okay, uh, I don't know. Wow. One year after dominating the CFL quarterback Nathan Rourke Nathan Rourke is trying to crack an NFL roster. Rook is in camp with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Making appearances in two preseason games so far, but Jaguars head coach Doug Peterson confirmed Saturday that CJ Beat Beathard, not Rourke, will begin 
the season as Trevor Lawrence's backup. This is the uh, strange news right now. New Orleans Saints tight end Jimmy Graham taken into custody after experiencing a medical episode, but it's not he's not being arrested. I I'm glad I read it first and then uh, uh, p uh, commented on it or just read it because yeah, it's just a pers it says right here. Okay, so New Orleans Saints tight end. Jimmy Graham was taken into custody, not to be scary, scary, it sounds scary, after experiencing a medical episode on Friday night, according to a statement from the team. Graham, 36, was taken into custody by officers who believed he was under the influence of a controlled substance after receiving a call about a person acting erratically near, near a Southern California resort. Okay, so the New Orleans Saints tight end Jimmy Graham experienced medical episode, a medical episode last evening, which resulted in him becoming disoriented, the team said. He was taken into custody by local authorities and transported to a local hospital for evaluation. Okay, so then, but it says that, I don't know, I'm not going to give the doctor's name, but, but somehow they got the doctor's name on this, that's really strange. He's not a public figure here. Okay. It's likely a seizure and spent the night. The doctor likely uh, said it is likely a seizure and spent the night on their medical supervision and testing. Green was released from the hospital Saturday morning and is with the team as he continues for Sunday's game against the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, if he had a, a seizure, I'm surprised that they didn't mention about taking his license. So, like, the, you know, like the uh, taking the license away, driver's license. I think they do that in certain. Well, I guess maybe they'll do that in uh, Louisiana, in, uh, Louisiana, or was it, or in California? I thought in California it'd be like, okay, but well, because it wasn't proven it was likely a seizure but if it was proven 100 percent that it was a seizure he could have got could have got his driver's license taken away for two years or three years just be, just to uh make sure that it doesn't happen again and then if he's cleared after a few years he can take his light driver's license back that's why i think it works like that i'm not sure oh this is the worst there was a disastrous preseason game for the Buffalo Bills but and that the, there's a quarterback not not the obvious uh, quarterback who's got an injury let's see Buff, before the Buffalo Bills took on the Pittsburgh Steelers not Josh Allen I'm saying the quarterback it's not him Pittsburgh Steelers for their second preseason game on Saturday August 19th quarterback Matt Bar Barkley had unexpectedly placed himself in the running to be Josh Allen's main backup as Kyle Allen's ongoing struggles were quite concerning. However, the hype surrounding Barkley to be QB2 came to a screeching halt during the Bills' 27-15 loss to the Steelers after replay after replacing Josh Allen, he was intercepted three times in Four pass attempts before getting sacked and losing a fumble. Bailey completed seven of twelve passes. Barkley, sorry. Barkley completed seven of twelve, 12 passes for 93 yards and zero touchdowns. Before the Bills announced he suffered an elbow injury. Okay. Then going to another story here. Raiders quarterbacks excel excel in 34-17 win over Rams. The Las Vegas Raiders continue to be consistent with excellent play this preseason, and tonight it was the quarterbacks that led them to a 34-17 win over the Los Angeles Rams. Okay. The fact that the 
Las Vegas Raiders went 2-0 in the pre 2023 preseason is nice, but that's not the most important thing about the impressive 34-17 victory over the Los Angeles Rams at SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California. What happens to oppressed fans of Raider Nation most was the performance of the team's new starting quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, who signed with the Raiders as a free agent during the offseason. Garoppolo played only the first series of the game in his inaugural performance with the Raiders. Still, he guided them to 68 yards in nine plays to a seven-yard touchdown run by running back Brandon Bolden with precisely 10 minutes left in the first quarter and uh, Las Vegas never trailed. Well, while engineering the touchdown drive, Garoppolo completed all four passes he threw th th he threw 39 yards including an 18 yarder to rookie tight end Michael Meyer, Mayer and a 10 yarder to running back Amir Abdul before taking a seat on the bench for the rest of the game. Well, I mean, there's just a little, a couple of passes. Okay, that's, that's, yeah, for preseason, pre that's all you want. It's, 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 it, yeah, get him on the bench. It's good enough. But I guess the other must say, he wanted to play, Garoppolo. Oh, we got, we got the Raiders, Entire quarterback corps looked sharp in this one. Okay. Veteran Brian Hoyer, another free agent signing, completed 12 of 22 passes for 144 yards without a touchdown. However, he did throw an interception that linebacker Jake Hummel returned 29 yards for a touchdown to tie the score. 10-10. With 8.42 left in the second quarter. A Raider, the Raiders got that one back when safety Isaiah Palamoa and AO pitched off quarterback Stetson Bennett's, Bennett's pass and returned it 50 yards for a touchdown with 1.55 left in the half to make it a 17-10 and Raiders were ahead the rest of the way. Oh, I was just looking here too. Let's see, engineering touchdown, Garoppolo. Oh, I guess that must. Okay, Brian Hoyer. I guess he must. He must be on the Raiders. I can. I'm not gonna go look it up. But you know what? I think it's good enough. The the eternal back the eternal backup Brian Horn Hoyer and journeyman, he's the eternal journey journeyman backup. Oh, he he he'd be the patron like if there was a patron saint of backup uh, quarterbacks journeyman backup quarterbacks that's Brian Hoyer. But you know, a couple million here, a couple million there, a couple million the year before then million before, you know, maybe he gets a million or two sitting on the bench. I'll take it. I'll take it. Hey, they just came with a wheelbarrow full of money, and I kind of took it, right? So. Okay. Let's, any other NFC notes? Hey, okay, let's see some NFC action here. NFC notes. Bears making the practice squad and hanging. Okay, it says NFC notes. Adrian Hutchinson, Bears, Lions, and Packers. Oh, some notes on it. Making the practice squad and hang, hanging around to develop further at the NFL would be a great outcome for Bears. Tyson Bengett. And then there's Mar Matt Elberfloss. Oh, this, this one's really getting the down and dirty. The the NFL TR. This one's this one's like it's yeah. This is a reading one. You no, know, you can't can't uh, can't use this one to, <laughs> to do your uh, show with. It's too long. And 
and the people that are noting are just like rookies and no no names. Okay. Five Brown players whose roster spot is on the line with Chiefs. Oh, jeez. That's some bad news. Let's see. We already had bad news. Let's let's get some good good news. Let's see. Well, it's not that team has to lose here. Okay, so let's see. Cowboys lose at Seahawks 22-14. Vaughn and Overshawn live game up at updates. The Cowboys traveled up the West Coast to play the Seattle Seahawks at Lumen Field on Saturday in the second exhibition game for each team, and Dallas dropped the decision 22-14. It was the second of three preseason games for the Dallas Cowboys, and they continued the exhibition season by visiting the Seattle Seahawks on Saturday night at Lumen Field, dropping a 22-14 decision. Last week, the Cowboys lost to aggressive Jacksonville Jaguars team. All right. Okay, so the Cowboys hosted Jaguars at AT Stadium last Saturday, and... and Fellas, Jags starting quarterback Trevor Lawrence saw early preseason actions. Lawrence did not look good in his good in good form early, but covered as he was picked off on the first drive of the game. Okay, let me go on about third string. That's the this is uh remember preseason. I'm reading preseason games. That's not good. Uh, let's see. Five Bronco players. Who's no? They're gonna be five. Uh, gonna be five players. I don't really know them. Uh, we were, I've seen that. Five players who won't be on the Patriots. Fifty p. Oh, let's see. Do I? Let's see. Coach Tomlin. Okay. Steelers coach Mike Tomlin blasts Kendrick Green. Not good enough. Ooh. 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 There weren't many negatives to take away from the Pittsburgh Steelers' 27-15 Week 2 preseason win over the Buffalo Bills on Saturday night, but an unquestionable negative was another botched exchange involving second-team center Kendrick Green. Oh, he's only the backup. Okay, let's... Oh, he shouldn't... Green took most of the second-team snap center for the second straight week, but also the second straight week he had a snap go awry last week. Matt Trubisky was able to corral an incorrect snap. This week, Green sent one sailing right over Mason Rudolph, who did not appear to be ready for the ball to be snapped. Okay. Uh, it's only preseason, and the Green, uh, Green's continued lack of performance in the preseason is already the tenuous grip on a roster spot, even in more jeopardy. Not good enough, head coach Mike Tomlin said of his performance. Oh, come on. Oh, oh come on, Mike. It's only pre... Oh. I, don't, I, I don't know. You pick... I guess that's one way to pick on a second stringer. Yeah, yeah, good enough. Uh, whatever. Just, you know, whatever. Uh, there's no need for that. Like, the, I, I could have phrased it in a better way. Just, uh... I don't know. I, I wouldn't have just did it. Okay. Let's take six takeaways from the 49ers win versus Denver. Let's see what happened here. Okay. The 49ers gutted out a win where many players had great moments and bad ones, making it a tough task for the coaching staff to sort out who to start, keep, and cut. The coaches are going to need Friday's exhibition game against the Chargers to provide some clarity. Okay, there are no clean. There are no clean solutions for the secondary. Oh, clean? Shouldn't that be clean? Clear? There are no clean solutions for the secondary. I think that should be clear. Okay, but Isaiah Oliver had his second bad game and lost his starting job. Denimori. Oh, what a long name. D E. 
O M N O D O R E. Dio Diomorde Lenar plays well at nickel. The debate is about to do outside at DB2. Okay. What is the uh, reason they came on here? Oh, takeaways. Samuel wants. Okay, Samuel Womack played well with two pass breakups, but he can't be vulnerable against the run, which is another key priority for Wilkes. Okay, uh, had great plays against both the run and the pass. Okay. Okay, it's an easy day for Brock Purdy and a complex one for Sam Darnold and Trey Lance. Purdy had the team in the rhythm and built his confidence going forward. This team needs to be balanced with the scheme, creating wide open throws where Purdy reserves credit is when he chooses not to throw the check down at, to Brian Iwak and saw a clean out our opening to Jacqueline Jennings with defenders. Close, smart decision and pass. Unlike Camp, Kyle Shanahan decided not to challenge Purdy with in intermediate to deep sideline throws. He chose to build confidence and succeed. Darnold had solid, if unspectacular, stats: 11 for 14 with 109 yards, a touchdown to undrafted free agent fullback Jack. Coletto and a tipped interception of Ronnie of Ronnie Bell's hands. And the larger constants through Darnold didn't come didn't move the team, had trouble evading pressure and struggled on third down. He had success with some intermediate throws, but the Niners punted on all of of his first half possessions. Lance is like the young NBA backup that comes off the bench and can't hit the water from a robo, then catches fire and carries the team. But Lance's ramp up was ugly, a low to dextry screen pass tipped and intercepted, a back foot throw nearly picked. Then then to his last three Possessions. The Niners scored 13 points with last evading the rush, running well, hitting six, hitting six straight, and making 20-yard throws into the coverage. Lance proved that he, when he's in a rhythm, he's elite. Okay, that's he's a. I guess he's a good backup, and if they're gonna put Brock Purdy first. Okay, is there anything? There's not. Okay, there's not much more here. Uh, nothing ju juicy, no rumors. So I'm just gonna pack this one in, and ho I know they hopefully I get no views on this one again, and that way I can just listen to it myself and see where I went wrong and a lot of pauses, and stutters, and oh boy. Okay. Well, with that, folks, it's. It's been Monday's sports and NFL news. I, I just felt like I just kind of mailed this one in. I didn't. I really didn't. I really don't have much heart into this one. It seems eh? I'm lying down and everything like that. But I'll just, I, you know, I'll to, I don't have to. Stream, I'm not gonna live stream this Saturday. So I guess I'll just get build up my strength and next Monday. I'll do. I'll just. I'll do it better. I'll do it much better. I'll do. I'll do it more lively and more into it. I'm kind of. I don't know. I'm just tired nowadays. I get tired so. I get tired so easy nowadays. Uh, this. Uh, and I was like I said. I'm mostly lying down, just, just having the microphone beside me and talking right into it, and I just uh, see how it comes from there. Um. Like I said, I'm not gonna do the live stream this Saturday. I, yeah, I'm just gonna take it easy. Go, uh, be going out possibly, at uh, someone's place, and uh, take it from there. Okay, over and out.